Alright, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Job. Job. <laughs> Job. We want to welcome our welcome our Facebook friends and family as well. But Job chapter 8. Me and the Holy Spirit, and y'all took up a lot of my time. I'm going to split this up. <laughs> now, I love when the Holy Spirit moves like that, uses people. Praise yeah. God, is awesome. Yeah. But I want to get all this out, but I'm not going to try to get it all out today. Yeah. So I'm just going to do part of it, recap, and give you the rest next week. We want it all. <laughs> but kind of leading into it again, the first Sunday of the year, John gave us a powerful prophetic word concerning this being the year of multiplication. That God was getting ready to multiply everything in our life. Everything concerning finances, ministry, that includes the whole lot, church. So I had this banner made, 2017, the year of multiplication. Our response to that needs to be, let it be to me as you've said. Amen. Again, God gives a prophetic word. You take it. You receive it. You get in agreement with it. Some of the most powerful words in the Bible were when the angel came to Mary. Yeah. prophesied to her concerning her giving birth to Jesus and I'm a virgin how is this going to be and he said the power of the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you etc etc and she said let it be to me according to your word yeah. Yeah. so when God gives us a prophetic word we get in agreement with it and take a hold of it so I want to talk about multiplication multiplication so Job chapter 8 Job chapter 8 Verse 5 says, If you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty. How many of you know there's only one Almighty? Hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. That's one thing I loved about that inauguration. Four out of six of those that prayed during the actual event in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No watering it down because we might offend and all that stuff. Alvina, Alvina, don't forget her. She was going to do the name of Jesus, but she could. She started the prayer. She said, "But I stand up for Jesus." Yeah. Amen. She said that on the interview. So. Woo! So that's five out of six. If you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, if you were pure and upright. Woo! Surely now, say now. now, he would awaken for you and prosper your rightful dwelling place. Though your, get ready shout church. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. I don't know about you, but for me that sounds like multiplication. Though your beginning was small, your latter end would increase abundantly. Right. Multiplication. Right. I'm continuing to expect the unexpected. I'm continuing yeah. to expect God to increase us abundantly. Yes. At no point does size really matter. That's right. Because our God's big. That's right. And regardless of how big or small we are as a ministry, we serve a big, big God. And He is the Lord God Almighty. And as we take Him at His word, as we submit, surrender to Him, allow Him to use us, He will speak to us. He will speak through us. He will use us. Don't you dare be like one in the Scripture when God called and told him what he wanted to do. Well, I got one of the smallest try. Don't be like Moses. I can't do that. I stutter. It doesn't matter what your apparent temporary limitations may be. God will still use you if you'll make yourself available. And God is getting ready to bring major multiplication into each and every one of our lives. And for those of you watching on Facebook, it's for you as well. He wants to bless and bring increase to all of His children. But again, we play a part in that. Some get all carried away and they'll talk about and I get the finished work of the cross. Well, the finished work of the cross was for our salvation. But our work isn't done, glory to God. Faith without works is dead. There's still things we need to do. And it tells you right here, if you would earnestly seek God. Are we earnestly seeking God, Firehouse? We need to earnestly seek God. I'm not seeking the stuff. Even though I'm talking about multiplication and increase. 
I'm not seeking all that. I'm seeking the one that's going to provide it. I'm seeking the one that owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I'm seeking the one that is our healer, our deliverer, our provider, our joy giver, our rock, our refuge, our fortress, our strength. I'm seeking Him. So are we earnestly seeking Him, church? So if you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty, I don't make my supplication, my prayer to Buddha. No. To Muhammad. No. I make him to the Father God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he said, Call unto me, Jeremiah 33, and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So are we seeking the Almighty? Are we bringing our petitions and prayers before him? Then he says, If you were pure and upright, yes, in and of ourselves, we can't be holy. We can't live right. Our righteousness is filthy rags in His sight. But because of our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, His shedding of the blood on the cross, He's declared each and every one of us that have received Him righteous. He's already called us holy. We just need to walk it out. I don't try to live right so I can be righteous. He's already declared me righteous. Sees me as righteous. Therefore, I want out of my love for Him. Want to live right. And the Holy Spirit in me equips and enables me to live pure and upright before Him. And He'll do the same for you. So again, I'm going to get into the multiplication and all that. But we got to live right. It's not time to play games. Again, it's not. He's done with the lip service. Yes. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Enough of that mess. We need to live right. But we know the one that enables us to live right. Glory to God. So if you would earnestly seek God, make your supplication to the Almighty. If you were pure and upright, I love it. Surely now He would awake for you and prosper your rightful dwelling place. I'm expecting Him to prosper us in our dwelling place. Amen. For Firehouse Church right now, this is our dwelling place. Yeah. And it is getting ready to expand. Yeah. He is enlarging our tent. Yeah. But He'll bless you. He'll prosper you in your dwelling place. In your home, wherever you live. I mean, Deuteronomy talks about the blessing for obedience. Bless you in the city. Bless you in the country. Bless coming in. Bless coming out. It don't matter where you live. He can bless you. And He can prosper you. And move mightily in your life. Then He says, Though your beginning were small, your latter end would increase abundantly. That sounds like multiplication to me. So I'm expecting Him to increase us abundantly. And it isn't for our glory. It isn't so we can make a name for ourselves. It's to exalt Him. It's for all the glory to go to Him. It's for us, and even in multiplication of, of people. It's about souls. It's about seeing souls saved, disciples being made, marriages being restored, lives being changed. So again, the Lord gave off an awesome promise here. And as we're believing that this is the year of multiplication, I'm believing that although our beginning was small, He's multiplying, He's increasing everything that's good and of Him in our lives. I'm not expecting an increase in multiplication of the enemy's garbage. All the drama, the sickness, the disease, the temporary lack, all that garbage that the devil's divvying out. I'm not believing for an increase in multiplication of that. Now he'll try to counteract God's word and what he's promised to get you distracted and frustrated and all that. You've got to reject it. You've got to resist it. Again, the enemy trying to put all that junk back in Emma, clogging her bowels up and her getting scared to go to the bathroom again and all this stuff. Prayed for her. A few days and all this kind of stuff. And the other night, those that were here Thursday heard this testimony, but the other night, was it Tuesday, Jenna? Tuesday, Jenna's in, they're in their beds and all that and all of a sudden Jenna hears some singing and she goes out in the hallway outside Emma's room and she's laying in the bed and what was the song she was singing? And she heard her keep singing that in her bed. So Jenna went and got her. And began to minister to her and said, that is for you. And ended up binding the fear off of her and all this kind of stuff. Ended up going to the bathroom and it's like floodgates were open in Jesus' name. The devil's a liar. So again, he's going to try to steal 
kill, destroy. But again, my Lord came and may have life and have it to the fullest and more abundantly. And sickness, disease, oppression, lack, and all that garbage isn't from God. That's not part of the buffet table that I'm eating of. Oh, here's lunchtime. Pastor's talking about buffet. You know, Sally's talking about weight and losing weight. I found out just how out of shape I am. Yesterday, we went down to... Uh, Old man's, Old man's cave area in a big national park. We're walking down all this stuff and trails and steps and all this stuff. My quads, my knees hurting like crazy. Realize just how out of shape I was. Well, one part, there's these like cliff kind of things that you can kind of climb up, go out on this ledge. So these girls, probably in their 20s, were crawling, were going up there. And I'd seen a view from another side and it was beautiful. And I thought, man, that could be cool to get up there. Well, they're climbing up there, and one of them mentioned something about wanting a group picture. So I said, well, I'll take y'all's picture. Oh, you will? Okay. So they all climb up there. I take the picture. And then I kind of reach up, give it to the one she's reaching down. And then I thought, oh, I'm going to climb up here. Charlotte wasn't there yet, so I knew I wouldn't get chewed out. <laughs> so I climb up to one part, tried to move, but the rock's coming out. And I'm doing this number. I'm like, no, I got some wisdom. Climb down. So then I tried to go up the way they did, made it about halfway, and I'm like, this ain't working. Then here comes my wife. You're not 20 anymore. Get down from there before you hurt yourself. <laughs> so I think that's what put me over the edge with it. So I came down. I'm like, yeah, I don't want to get up further and land on my head or something. <laughs> See, I discovered I got to continue to work on this and get some muscle strength back. I will conquer that cliff in Jesus' name. I still got some pride. <laughs> But I'm believing God to multiply everything good and it's of Him in our lives. But again, like I said, the enemy will come to try to distract and lay all that and you just need to resist it. Resist it in Jesus' name. So we've got to do our part, church. We've got to earnestly seek God. We've got to make our supplication to the Almighty. We need to live pure and upright before Him. And as we do that, He will prosper our dwelling place and increase us abundantly. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 10. Uh, back up verse 7. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, of vines, of fig trees and pomegranates. A land of olive oil and honey. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. Does that sound like lack? No. In which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full. Yeah. You look around and see who's done that. <laughs> then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. But beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full... And have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. I won't build a house and not live in it. Unless I'm building it for somebody else. You're going to bless. Verse 13. And when your herds and your flocks do what? Multiply. And your silver and your gold. Multiplied. Multiplied. And all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents, scorpions, and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not have, that he might humble you, that he might test you to do good to you in the land. Then you say in your heart, my power and the wealth of my hand have gained me this wealth. And eh, wrong. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, 
which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Now there's warning and there's blessing in there. The warning is not to forget where it came from. The warning is not to forget sum summit up to obey God. To remember all that God has done for us. But he lists some things here of what God's done for us. Again, we're talking about multiplication. Verse 1, or this first one, he says, When you have eaten and are full, God expects us to eat and to be full. Talks about building beautiful houses and dwelling there. We as his children shouldn't be homeless, shouldn't be living on the street. Right. And I throw this one out there. I thank God for a president that's going to do something about the veteran situation. There is no veteran that has ever served, especially in war, that should ever be living on the street, should be homeless, not getting medical care. The suicide rate is ridiculous for veterans, but it's enough of that stuff. Enough. Enough. But build beautiful houses and dwell in them. Again, that's why part of my vision, I want this ministry to own houses. Yes. What? Yes. I want to house battered women. House recovering addicts. House those that have lost their home and just need a start. See, a lot of the homeless, they just need a start. They can't get a job because they don't have an address. Well, guess what? You got an address once we're there. To build houses and dwell in them. That's multiplication. Talks about your herds and flocks being multiplied. That was their source of provision. And again, in some cases, food as well. But your jobs, your income multiplied. Verse 4 covers that as well. Your silver and gold multiplied. And again, like I'm not one that chases money and wealth. I chase him. But I'm not a poverty preacher. Again, I see these clowns on Facebook. Oh, they're that prosperity preacher. Dog and some of the bigger names that preach the prosperity gospel. I preach the prosperity gospel, but I preach it in balance with the word. Right. You'll never hear me teach you chase money, chase wealth. No, you chase Jesus. Right. But believe God that he wants you to be blessed, to be a blessing. How can I feed the hungry if I can't feed my own family? Amen. How can I clothe the naked if I can't even clothe my own family? Amen. How can I help anybody else out if I'm helpless? Amen. So the true biblical prosperity is to prosper you and bless you so that you can be a blessing and help others. So yes, I'm a prosperity preacher. Unfriend me, I don't care. <laughs> but silver and gold multiplied. And then he says, all that you have multiplied. Every good and perfect gift comes from Him. So if it's coming from Him, I want it multiplied. Again, I ain't talking the devil's garbage multiplied. He can have his stuff. Again, reject it. Don't answer the door when he comes bringing his goofy delivery. Hallelujah. Get my doorbell rings. I'll look through the people or the window to see who's there. And if it's a solicitor, nine times out of ten, I don't even answer. Because I don't want what you're trying to bring in your offer. Besides that, I got three yappy dogs that'll be barking their mouths off and I can't even hear what they're saying anyway. I said, I feel your pain. <laughs> so again, when you have eaten and are full, you've built beautiful houses and dwelled in them, herds and flocks multiplied, silver and gold multiplied, all that you have multiplied. That's multiplication. My God is about multiplication and increase. And all through Scripture... God is about multiplication and increase. In the very beginning, He was about multiplication and increase. Genesis 1.28 says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and what? Multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. Speaking to Sarah, the angel in uh, Genesis 16.10, Genesis 16, 10, the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. See, I'm believing God to multiply the people that are coming here. Yes. Not for number's sake, but for soul's sake. Yeah. Right. Matthew 28, we're to go into all the world and what? Make converts? No, make disciples. Yeah. But it begins with them being converted and born again. Right. Well, I want the majority of the growth. We got a good foundation here, but we need to go after souls. And I believe, and that's the top of the list. Praise God for his financial increase, provision, buildings, homes, all that stuff. I want souls. 
So that's the top of my list. Multiplication of souls coming into the kingdom of God. Marriages being restored. People being healed, set free, delivered. Multiplication. Genesis 22, verses 16 to 18. And said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord. He's speaking to Abraham when he was going to offer Isaac up. God obviously stopped him from slaying him. By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore, and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Yes. In your seed all nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Again, obedience is still a major key, church. The willing and what? Obedient. We'll eat the good of the land. So if you want the multiplication and the increase that I know God has for you individually, and us as a corporate body, we need to continue to obey God. When he says give, you give. When he says go here, go here. Preach here, preach here. Pray for this one, pray for this one. Minister to this one, minister to this one. Exodus 7, 3, and I'll end with this one for today. Exodus chapter 7, verse 3. This was when he called Moses and messing with Pharaoh and all that. Wanting to let his people go. God said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Now in that text, he was doing that to get his attention. And again, as you all know, the sorcerers and all them, they brought out lying signs and wonders and God always trumped it. Trump, uh, trumped it. But he multiplying signs and wonders. God still wants to multiply signs and wonders. Again, gets people's attention. Again, there's hard-hearted people out there. I don't believe in God. When God produces a sign and a wonder, a miracle... Guess what? Their eyes are open. I see it all the time on Christian news sites. Of Muslims in foreign countries having visitations from the Lord. Calling them out of that darkness and sin that they're in. Flat out telling them who He is. And then putting their faith and trust in Him. Thank God for missionaries and preachers and all that we're doing and all that. But God signs and wonders is moving supernaturally all over this world, making Himself known, and people are getting saved and radically changed. Well, I'm believing. Again, I thank God for all that He's done in this place. I thank God for all that He did last year. I thank Him for the healings, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. They're going to multiply this year. Some of you, you're still contending for yours. Keep contending for it. Again, what if the woman with the issue of blood gave up? What if some of the others, one of them is lame, I think, 38 years. I know when you're going through, when I make a statement like, you know, it doesn't matter how long it does when you're the one dealing with it. But when I say that, it doesn't matter how long in relation to, it don't mean squat to God. It doesn't tie God's hand. It's just your doubt and unbelief will. But if you'll continue to contend and believe and stand in faith, believing God. And when I get done with this one, I'm going to do a series. And I've entitled it Concerning Faith. Those that are on Facebook, I, I started out the other day just posting some scriptures concerning faith and what that verse meant. And ended up a whole slew of them. I'm like, man, this will preach. <laughs> and then put it all on one page. Well, I'm going to make a whole sermon series into it concerning faith. Yes. Faith's important. We need to realize what all faith will accomplish in our lives. And I'm not talking about you trying to work up faith in your faith. The faith is in God. But when we put our faith in God, that is the God of the impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. We can believe Him to multiply everything in our life that He wants to multiply. So I just want to challenge you and encourage you. And again, I'll finish this next week. This is the year of multiplication. And I don't believe even because I'm saying it's the year of multiplication. It's really going to begin this year. But it ain't ending. December 31st, 2017. God isn't going to say, well, I'm done multiplying for the firehouse. No. We're going to look back and see all that God multiplied in our life. See all that God multiplied in this place. And our faith is going to increase even more to believe God for even more. And the multiplication and the increase is going to continue. 
multiple souls coming into the kingdom. Multiple signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. No lack. Multiple financial provision. And then there's no ministry can do what God wants them to do without finances. Concerning India, by the way, only as of this morning, $200 shy of the total. Again, my tickets were already covered. Rob just said, the budget's this, you pray, whatever the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that's what you sow towards it. Because that other amount includes hotel, food, all the transportation for those that they're going out and getting all that. So the Lord dropped 2000 in my spirit. Again, we ain't a big church, but we're big in faith. Amen. We're big in trust in God. Yes. So we're $200 shy of that, sending him that $2,000. i am going to send it this week. Because even if the other $200 doesn't come in, we got it in the budget. Yeah. But if anybody hasn't sowed yet and you want to, make up that difference. Praise God. I'll give $200. right, praise God. There it is. Is <laughs> that $2,000? I'm sending that check out tomorrow. And it's met in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I'm excited. And again, when we do stuff like this, God can't help but bless. Yes. God can't help but favor. And each and every one of you that have given towards that, you think God isn't going to bring multiplication and increase in your life? He will. Again, the majority, this isn't one of those, and I want to go on those where, you know, those have heard it. It's the big crusade with 50, 75,000 people, and it's for healings and all that, but the majority already saved. These are ones that haven't even heard the gospel. I mean, we're going out in the sticks. Right. Trucks going out. Amen. He said over a period of three or four nights, there'll probably be 30, 40,000 coming that have never heard the gospel. Right. So this is about souls. Yes. And all of you that help send us. I say yes. us, because again, that rest helps cover yes. the other expenses. Right. Yes. Yes. You're going to be rewarded for that. Right. Yes. So every soul that gets saved, every healing, every miracle, you played a part in that. Again, it's three to four, four nights, I believe, because the budget's met of crusade-type meetings. That Saturday's a, a pastor's conference. Sunday, the three of us, because there's a Christian doctor going, friend of his, myself, and Evangelist Rob, we're all going to preach in a different church. So it's awesome what God's going to do and can't wait. But again, y'all played a part in that. So right there is going to be a beginning of multiplied souls coming into the kingdom. Yeah, but they don't go here, don't matter. I'm, my focus isn't just, quote, on building the firehouse. It's about building the kingdom of God. Yeah. God told me years ago, if you'll focus on building my kingdom and not your local church body, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. the church will grow. Yes. So focus on building the kingdom. Yes. So as we, again, give outside of here, preach outside here, minister in other places, God will increase and multiply the foundation here. So I'm believing, and I know that I know that I know God is going to do so many great and mighty things this year. But we need to continue to contend for it, believe God for it, stay faithful, committed to Him. And again, next week I'll finish the message just to continue to reinforce it. Multiplication, increase, it's all through the Word of God and all that He wants to do in our life. Amen? Amen. Stand to your feet. Rick, why don't you close this out for it, brother? Yeah. All these other people involved today. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just release your eternal blood-covered light and life into every person that is willing to receive your spirit. Yes. So right now, by your spirit, by your blood, we thank you for the word, yes. the word that is powerful and alive and effective mm -hmm. in each one of us. Yes. May, they, may it find its mark in our hearts. Yes. Do the work for eternal, eternity's sake. Yes. And Father, may we be changed as agents in favor of the gospel of Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo!